we're good. Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, we have a joint meeting tonight of the Commission on Aging as well as uh, the Parks and Rec Commission. Um, and of course, the staff is here as well. With that, um, I'm going to open it up for audience and citizens and for the Parks and Rec Commission, the person that was on our agenda canceled. So we'll open it up to the audience that's first here if they have something that they want to talk about. And then we'll ask uh, people on Zoom if there's anything they want to talk about. So with that, anybody would like to speak at this point? Okay, Jim. If I name address, if you can come up here so that they can hear you on Zoom. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Tim Thurston, 100 Sawmill Drive in Berlin. <clears throat> There's not a lot I really haven't said, but what I would like to do first. Apologize for my uh, son and wife who are the coach and the assistant coach of the Berlin High School uh, men's swimming team. They're uh, now at the state open uh, diving championships with one of our, our divers. <clears throat> so I wanted to give you the results of the Berlin High School uh, swimming team. <clears throat> they had 15 members that made the state team, you know, everyone from uh, seniors to freshmen. <clears throat> All right, we have probably 25 kids on the team. And out of those 15 made the state team. Everybody went to the conferences. We got second in our conference. <clears throat> but the state meet, we had uh, <clears throat> Aiden uh, Melnick was a state, uh, state champion diver. Took first place, all state. <clears throat> and we had, uh, I can't remember all the kid, kids' names, but Logan uh, Sesniak <clears throat> was the state champion in 100-yard breaststroke. He was also second place in all state in the 200 IM. <clears throat> um, we also had two relays that were all state, and all state is top two. So the relays, we had three uh, school records broken at the state meet. <clears throat> and really, the reason I'm, you know, there's not a lot of following, you know, by newspapers or, or anything else. You know, you don't really get to see all the good stuff that, that's done by the teams. <clears throat> right? um, these guys are swimming. <clears throat> I, I think the coaches and the kids do a tremendous job. All right, <clears throat> they're dealing with schools again from Fairfield County, from regional schools uh, that have their own pools, <clears throat> all right, at their high school or right across the street or something. <clears throat> and <clears throat> these kids just they get out of class, they walk across the street and they have swim practice, or they walk down the hall and they have swim practice. Okay, our kids, as you probably told you a million times, they got on a bus. <clears throat> they're, they're transferred through the snow, through the rain, and everything else down to the Baird and Y <clears throat> for practices. That same truck takes our diver over to Plainville High School <clears throat> where he practices. And then they take they pick him up from diving, come back to Platt, or, uh, Baird and Y to pick up the swimmers back here. <clears throat> All right, so that time they're really, they have a two hour practice and it, it's probably three or three and a half to four hours between transportation and everything else. <clears throat> You know, and the kids are doing this and they're becoming state champions. You know, I have to give them a lot of credit. <clears throat> I like to keep in mind when we're when we are talking about a senior center, community center. Um, <clears throat> the other thing I wanted to say is uh, great job by everybody involved in this <clears throat> project. Okay, many of you were asked to take, you know, the original drawings <clears throat> and scale it down. And I did see it a little bit. And I'm, I applaud you. You did a really, you, you did what the mayor told you to do. Okay, get what our needs are. Get, <clears throat> get what you, what we need in this town for the seniors, for the community center, for the swim team too. And you did. There's a few tweaks, a couple of things I, I have to say. The locker rooms are too small. Okay, five lockers or ten lockers and something. You're going to need a whole wall or a couple of walls. So that can be tweaked. <clears throat> All right, you guys did your job. Okay, you did what the mayor asked. Now, let's ask the mayor to do his job, take this going forward. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Would you like to speak? Yes, I'm Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brian Jennings, 2 Elder Boulevard in Kensington. 
Um, I just assumed the role of Berlin Little League baseball and softball president. I would be a good person. Thank you. Just have a face to the name, right? Um, and Jen, right? Yes. And so I've been in touch with Jen, and I was um, told that I could come to this meeting and just talk about some new things in the league. Um, one of the important things to us, uh, we haven't had great community involvement and sponsorship in the Little League in over the last couple of years. I can't say where the breakdown has been, but I will say that um, the new team of people who have come into place are really gung-ho. They have young kids uh, from the ages of five to seven to eight. Um, some new leadership that has come in, and they have been all about just getting kids back on the field and as many kids as we can outside of playing baseball and softball. So one of the things that can go on with that is kind of a revamp of our sponsorship. So I wanted to just um, ask um, a couple of questions of this commission. So we are getting ready to print some signs of our new sponsors. We hang those at first at um, Headed Field. Uh, we hang those signs at um, the fields at Long Meadow, at um, Long Meadow, that's an elementary school where I work. Um, at Denny, at the T-ball field, um, at the two fields at Griswold. And uh, so one of the questions I have, are field signs allowed at Beretta Field? One of our, um, coach, one of our uh, board members, Angel, he is the coach of the juniors team and his company has sponsored a sign, and a few signs, and he wants to hang one at uh, his field over at Percival Field at Beretta. Um, just wondering if that's allowed. I know the high school team does play there, so I don't know if there's any wavering on sponsor signs being held there. Um, and the other question I had, uh, we have some signs that are going up at Denny Field. Um, the T-ball field has a fence that's all the way to the back. You can see it if you're going out McGee parking lot. I know there's a fence on the street there. I know signage on that street is not allowed. But on the field, there's a fence all the way in the back. It's kind of by the house line over there, and it faces inward to the field. And we have some people who have stepped up and have had have younger kids that are playing, and they want to know if their signs are allowed to be hung on the t-ball field. I know it's street facing. I don't know what the parameters are. That is, I take the guidance of the commission to say yay or nay as to whether we can hang a sign there. Um, can I just clarify? That's yep. where the soccer field is, like at the far back. Far back. Behind it is someone's private property. Yep. Right? Okay. Yep. Yeah. And so, so there's so there's a fence line there, yeah. and you can yeah. kind of see anywhere on the t-ball field. Um, we just have a couple of sponsors that are interested looking to hang a sign over there. And we have our one coach who has whose company sponsors to hang a sign over at Beretta, if allowed. So I just ask um, whenever those questions can be answered, whether it's at this meeting, if you discuss, um, I have great communication with Jen. She's been wonderful to work with. Again, I'm new to the role and assuming the position without any prior institutional knowledge, just having a daughter that played softball and I have two younger sons that are involved in the league. It's been very exciting for me. It's been a breath of fresh air. Yes, it's been a lot of work, but it's been well worth it. And uh, our current registration for baseball and softball numbers are up from where they were last year. So we're getting kids back outside, back on the field. We're gonna have a lot of fun this year. Right. So I can tell you that Beretta is, yep, as long as it's included in your presentation of banners at an April meeting, um, that's not gonna be a problem at all. We've had science sponsorships right. I've up Beretta. Smithfield, I just want to double check where that fence line is. So I will double check that myself and get back to you. And I'll talk to Steve about that one because it is street facing. But if it's all the way back, like you're saying, I don't think it's going to be a problem. I just want to have a visual of it, of course. It is. Okay. But yeah, that'll all be in your presentation at the April meeting. Okay. The Would you just update me at that meeting? Is it going through all the sponsor signs and everything? You're going to bring every sign that you want to hang on a field. You don't have to tell me who the sponsors are. You have yep. to tell me this. I think it's, I can resend you the banner policy if you want for okay. your convenience. I'll check it out. That. Um, I think it's the, the size of the sign. They have to be vinyl, um, attached with zip ties. It's yeah, it's all in there. Okay. So I can resend that to you. We can touch base tomorrow. Okay. And you have, I have already actually told the commission this a couple months ago when we first met with you via Zoom that you've been a pleasure to work with and really, yeah. Really great at communication, which is huge. So I thank you for that. Thanks. Appreciate it. I've been here in Berlin for seven years. We moved around from New Britain to Southington, back to New Britain, here in Berlin. We found a nice spot, and there's a great community here. My kids love the schools here. Everything about the town is awesome. So I appreciate everybody. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Tina. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? An audience citizens. Okay. Uh, is there anyone on Zoom that would like to talk audience of citizens? Going once on Zoom, going twice. Nope, we're good. 
So, Brian, what's your address? Uh, two Ellsworth Boulevard. Thanks. <laughs> Our secretary is on Zoom, so she can't hear everything. Okay. Does anybody audience citizens? No one's I, nope. Right. Okay, with that, thank you. We'll close audience of citizens. Uh, and now tonight, kind of the start of our meeting will be a joint meeting of the Commission on Aging and the Parks and Rec Commission. With that, because commission members and others may not know the people that sit on the commission. Barbara, starting with you, if you can introduce yourself at this Commission on Aging. Okay, Barbara Gabas, Commission on Aging. She's our chairperson. Tina Doyle, director of the Senior Center. And Gantling, Commission on Aging. Roger Moss, Commission on Aging. Christine Malvasera, Commission on Aging. Christine just joined us tonight. This is her first meeting. No. Yeah. Yeah. Tony Petrinas, Parks and Rec. Tom Bellacolo, Parks and Rec. Joe Pulcini, Parks and Rec. Great Star, Parks and Rec. Debbie Dennis, Superintendent of Recreation. Donna Bove, Parks and Rec. Brian A. Humes, Chapinski Humes Architects. Dan Ochoa, Tom Brown. Okay. All right. Thank you. With that, um, the purpose of the joint meeting tonight is to review what everybody should have is the current draft, and it is a draft of the what Brian terms as a space needs assessment. It replaces or will replace the Commission on Aging and Parks and Rec Commission statement of need that was done a few years ago for the first project. Um, Brian Humes is a local guy for many that might not know, there's many that do know, raised his kids here in town and um, has his office here in town and he has worked a lot on different projects within our town, most recently police department renovation. Uh, the town council, Back in December, I think it was, uh, by the time the contract got ready, it was in January of this year, hired Brian uh, as a new architect on this project of a combined community and senior center. And they, they Brian will talk, talk to what his role is, what they've asked him to do. But most recently, and for the last few months, he's worked directly with Barbara Gobbats, Tina Doyle, Dennis, Debbie Dennis, Jen Ochoa, and myself. Um, the five of us to sit down with him and have meetings and painstakingly go through and reduce the size of our proposed community and senior site. Um, we believe we've accomplished that. Uh, we've challenged each other. Brian has challenged us as well, and that's part of his role. Um, and I'm speaking, well, I'll speak for everybody, including Brian, because he said it. We want to see something go forward. This town needs something to go forward. We would like it to be a combined community and senior center. Uh, we would like it to be no less than what this document says. That being said, we all understand how things will go in the future. There may be further studies. Brian will talk to what he's been asked to do for this first phase. As you see, it's a written document. There's no pictures, there's no layout, there's no blueprint. Uh, it's not a nice video, but he is not being paid to do that. He was paid to put this together. So, uh, and along with a couple of other things that he has to complete, I believe his reports due middle of May to the council, and uh, this will be incorporated. The commissions, both commissions, will review it tonight with Brian. <clears throat> uh, I ask you to hold back questions until Brian's gone through it, jot down questions that you have as he goes through. One of us may interject in a certain area if we feel it's appropriate, just to clarify something that, you know, maybe Brian said that we, we just want to clarify. He may so, challenge me and I challenge <laughs> Right. Um, <laughs> and I will say, um, Brian is, does need to be at the uh, Public Building Commission sometime tonight, but he will, <laughs> will take our time to uh, go through this. This is a priority. So, um, Again, just hold your questions to the end. That would be great. And with that, Brian, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Donna. Do we not need to put this on the screen? I'm going to do a page turn. So I think the people that are on Zoom could yes. easily see it if you. Yeah, so go ahead. I'll work on that. Share that. Yep. It'll take me a minute. So go ahead. Okay. Good evening. Uh, 
as Donna said, I was asked by the town through the town council to put a new set of eyes onto the community and senior center needs for the town of Rome. Understanding that there was an earlier effort to put together a proposal and put together plans and costs for a new facility. For various reasons, that really did pass the smell test for the council. And instead of just terminating the discussion, the town approached me to say, could I re-engage the conversation? And re-engage the conversation just to determine what the needs of a facility would be. At first, I, I questioned how this was really gonna work. Who would I be working with? Who would I be asking the questions? And they identified for me the subcommittee that Donna just uh, outlined. And the subcommittee has been the entity that I've been asked to uh, participate with to come up with a new needs, a statement of need. Now, when I do a statement of needs for any community, and, and we have experience doing senior centers, we have experience doing community centers, our business really centers in municipal architecture. I've had a business uh, since 1996. We, we just strictly do municipal work. So this was one of the reasons the town knows me. I know the town. Uh, we, I grew up uh, not in town, but I did graduate Berlin High. So I know the community. I've been here for 35 years. With that, I kind of know the history of what's been happening in town with a community center or a senior center. I, I knew that there was history. When I moved to town, I remember here in 10 years, we'll have a new community center. And I would say, everybody's heard it, everybody knows it. And so we still are looking for the solution. So I agreed to do this, but I agreed to do this with a really limited role at this point of the project. It's a limited role because I've been hired on an hourly basis on a not to exceed uh, cost. And they're controlling what I can do and they're controlling how far I can advance the project. So what they've asked me to do in, a, in summary is to develop a statement of needs, a needs assessment. This is the document. Once I have this document in hand, and it's been looked at and endorsed. And endorsed, I mean, endorsed by the committee that put it together, but endorsed also by the committees that they're representing. So it's all of you. Once this is endorsed, then I also have to go back to the council and answer a few more questions that they have. Can this be a phased solution? Can this solution be accommodated in multiple buildings or on multiple sites? Can this needs uh, be accomplished with existing buildings or just new construction? So there's a lot of questions still, once this is endorsed, there's a lot of questions that still have to be answered. What I have not been asked to do is do any floor plans. I have not been asked to do any site plans. I'm not designing a building. We're talking about a building. Every good project though starts this way. This is very typical for a municipal building to start this way. Because what I say these are, these are the puzzle pieces. We're just talking about puzzle pieces. How many puzzle pieces do we need to put together the puzzle? So think of these as your puzzle pieces. When, it, when this does hopefully go to a floor plan stage or a site plan stage, you want to make sure that what's described in here is on your solution. If it's, <laughs> if it's not in here, don't expect to find it in your final solution. So 
But that's how this is really used as I say, this is the Bible going forward. This will walk through the project to the end to find out that if it's in here, you should have it in your final solution. The other thing I stressed to the subcommittee when I was working with them is this is not my document. It's your document. I'm helping you get to your document. So I was not asked to come in and dictate what the needs are. I'm asked to ask the questions as to why it's a need. Is it a want? Is it a nice to have? Is it a high in the sky? Is this just something that should be looked at as suggestions? No. If the project goes forward, these are what the needs are. The difference between a need and a want is anything that you can take out of this would be a want. If you pared this down far enough that you say, whoa, now we can't support the programs that we want to provide, then it's a need. What the council does with this after we hand it over to them, that's anybody's guess. But I think this document has to really go to the council with one voice. It's one, all of yours, one voice. And if it's not with one voice, then we still have to work on it. Because it's your document. This will represent the needs of the Commission on Aging and the Park and Rec Commission going forward. So it's, it's important that you know what's in here. And it's important that you understand how we put it together. Obviously, we can't go through all of the hours of meetings that we've had to get to this point. But I do want to tell you tonight in a really precise way how this is put together and what's in it. Because it's important that you know that and to develop that collective voice. Because the council has to continue to hear from a collective voice if this is going to move forward. And that's just what I'm saying in my opinion. If they're splintering about, well, I think we should have done this, I think we should have done that, that should happen before this goes any further. This should happen in this committee. We also have to understand why the first proposal failed. And it was because there was a perception that the facility was too large, the facility was too expensive, and it didn't fit other people's perceptions as to what was going to be done there. There may not have been one voice either when it was looked at. There was a lot of difference of opinions to a lot of different people. And that doesn't help the project go forward. So that's why we have an opportunity. I said in the very first meeting, and Donna quoted it, I said in the very first meeting, what I hate most of all is for a project to sit on a shelf. If I get involved in a project, I get involved because I want the project to move forward. This should not sit on the shelf. If you can all put your collective minds into this document and help me present this as your one voice, I can now go to the council with a stronger voice. It's not just me saying that these are the needs. I have all of you to stand behind this to say that you also support this. And that is the stronger presence to get this thing completed. So yes, I will make the recommendations. I will make the report back to the council. That's what they've asked me to do. But I have to know that I'm doing that with the support of all of you and both your commissions, plus the subcommittee, plus the staff. Um, the more people that can become part of this collective voice, now we're starting to build momentum to get something done. What we do know, and what I've developed, what we do know, this is the square footage of the community center currently. We've gone down and, and documented the existing space and it's 21,716 square feet of space. So we have the rooms laid out and we know the uses. 
We've also laid out the senior center. We've gone in and reviewed this against current conditions, and the senior center right now is taking up 7,903 gross square feet of space. That does not include the greenhouse. You want to throw in the greenhouse, you're at 8,040 square feet. But I thought for just round numbers, let's not talk about the greenhouse. Let's just talk about the space that's being utilized. Um, primarily with for, for senior occupancy and senior programs and support. So here it's 7,903. So those are starting points. The way this is organized is on page one, we just have general information. General information is the departments, the contacts, who the subcommittee is, the community area, and the population of Berlin. We just got this general information. We also look, uh, noted the age of 50 to 59 is 18% of the Berlin population, and 60 and over is 28% of the Berlin population. So uh, almost half the population is 50 and older within the town of Berlin. And it is trending you know, in, in that direction too. Um, so this is just a starting point of, of current condition. If I could just, um, just for comparison purposes, if you look at the town of Rocky Hill and you compare the state of Connecticut demographics, debt, blah, 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 and then take Berlin, pretty much identical. About 20,000 residents, they might have slightly less than 46%, but it's like 45, 44% over 50. And, uh, and you know, so overall, and you can see everything compared demographics. We'll share that with the commissioners in the next month. So. You go to page two, it starts the, the meat of the space needs assessment. And this is just labeled public. Number one is public. So as far as public spaces, these are the spaces that if you walk through the front door, this is the public space of meeting and entering into the building. Now you can think about walking into a building. You can think about coming through a vestibule into a public lobby with a cafe, coffee station around the public entrance. <clears throat> we do talk throughout this document about adjacencies. Adjacencies are are in, they're going to be important to your architect to find out what wants to be next to what. So what we are putting together is a, is a facility that can be functional and efficient, but meet also what those needs are. The description of this space is what we've developed in conversation with the subcommittee. Over on the right side of the page, you see 100, 400, 400. That's something that I did not ask the subcommittee at all. That's the square footage that I've assigned to the description of the space. The square footage did not come out of the subcommittee. The square footage came out of my assessment, of what I feel I need as far as square footage to accomplish the task. If this is how we're getting a building that we feel is functional and efficient, and it's right sizing the facility for whatever you want to do this. Now, some of the square footages that I assign to spaces are very specific and have to do with occupancy of a room. Building code says if you want to put 100 people in a room, I need X number of square feet per person, and that gives me the occupancy of the room. Some of these spaces are not that derived. If you have a public lobby and a waiting area, we only have a waiting area for four. That's for pickups and drop-offs. But we have to visualize all of the other functions that it's asking for here, plus circulation space, plus giving enough room for the, for the amenities that you want in that space. So I put 400 square feet on the lobby. That's a, that's a target. 
when somebody designs this, ultimately, it could be 500 square feet, it could be 375 square feet, it could be, I mean, 400 is a target, but it's not a hard and fast. This is really defining sizes of areas in relationships to other areas. So I want, what I want you to concentrate as a committee are the descriptions. Never once did I ask the subcommittee, how many square feet do you need in the lobby? They don't think that way. As architects, we think that way, but subcommittees, and I'm sure you would agree that if you were to have, if I was to ask you, how many square feet do you want in the lobby? It might be a tough question to answer. It's an easier question to answer if I say, what do you want in the lobby? How do you want the lobby to feel? What do you? What are some of the things you want to see in the lobby? What are some of the adjacencies once you get to the lobby? What do you want it adjacent to? Here we want it adjacent to the administrative secretary, front desk reception, the public restrooms. So that's what would be close to and adjacent to that lobby. The square footage that you see is a net square footage. It says in the upper right, square footage net. I want to explain what net square footage is. Net square footage is the area of the space from wall to wall and wall to wall. If I have a 10 by 10 office, I have a hundred square feet net. Later on in this, you'll see that I'm going to now talk, and, and why don't we split ahead to page 14. If you get to page 14 is my summary. So under public, I have 900 square feet. That's the 400 square foot. Put 400 for the lobby, 400 for the cafe, and 100 square feet for the bathroom. But well, within that first category, there's 900 square feet of space. I total up at the bottom 41,065 total net square foot. But then you see right below it net to gross factor for gym and pool, net to gross factor for all other spaces. And it says times 1.35. This is a typical planning uh, equation for, for architects and planners that we have to go from a net square footage to a gross square footage. Now, what is the difference? Net, I just told you, it's what I'm going to have within the moment. The gross square footage would be now the outside of your exterior wall, the outside of your exterior wall, and it includes thicknesses of walls. It includes corridor spaces. It includes wall thicknesses on your outside of your building. You might think 35%. Yeah. 35% is taken up by other circulation and other walls and wall thicknesses when you're doing a planning for a, for a new facility. So we've gone from, and for the for the gym and the pool, it's a factor of 1.10. That's because if you're doing a gym, you really don't have wall thicknesses within your gym. Your gym's a wide open space. Your pool would be a wide open space. And you really don't have all the other circulation requirements and interior wall, walls and wall thicknesses. So I can reduce those areas to a 1.10 versus 1.35. But we're really generalizing the building. Without a floor plan, we're trying to project and predict what the needs would require for the building of a certain size. So yeah, I'm going to jump to the conclusion. We're at 50,250 gross square feet. Now that compares to the last plan that was put together at 72,000 square feet. We knew the conclusion was going to have to be less than 72,000 square feet. If we went back to the council and said, guess what? We have a needs assessment here of 72,000 square feet. We already know that answer. 
But what I'm pleased to report, the 50,000 square feet does target the program requirement that's all been discussed by the subcommittee. It's all in here. I don't know how the other project became 72,000 square feet. I don't care. What I care about is, does this accurately describe the programs that you want to participate in, how you want to participate in them? And if it does, I think you can do it in 50,000 square feet. This we I've been doing this for years and years and years. If I say 50,000 square feet, I'm very confident I could put a floor plan together, get you everything that's in here at or around 50,000 square feet. Now it might be 52 when I'm done, it might be 48. It, it, it's gonna be around 50,000 square feet. I'm confident of that. So one of the things we developed to try to test the need is another diagram. And this is not a floor plan, but this is an adjacency diagram. If there's a, a need that's identified in the space needs assessment, like a vestibule or a lobby or a cafe that we just talked about, this is a diagram that shows those areas to scale. That shows that's a 400 square foot block. That's a 400 square foot block. That's a 100 square foot block. If you wanted adjacencies next to the admin office and the central meeting room, back. So all we've done is shown the square footage in a diagram, and we've indicated the adjacency that was reported in. So this might be an easier way for you to understand all of this, and we can make this diagram available to you to the uh, subcommittee. And if you want to look at the, the needs in this way, understanding that this is not a final floor plan at all, this gives you the size of the gym compared to the size of the central meeting room, compared to the size of the pool, compared to the size of the pool viewing area. These are all to scale based on the square footage numbers you have to adopt. Now, yeah, you could say we're just going to put an exterior wall around this. And that's your floor plan. Well, we could do better than that. So I'm, I'm not saying that this wants to be that solution. This is just saying that if I have a lobby and I want to walk through the building, these are the things that I want to be able to access. So it might be easier for you tonight in the time that we have. So let me just talk about this adjacency diagram. You'll have a better understanding of what this is without having to go through every line, every word. I'm going to first take this side of the plan. A central meeting room. The central meeting room is the largest primary meeting room. It also talks about, you can separate this down with a, a folding partition to break this down into two spaces. Maybe it's a 60% space and a 40% space. It's not, it doesn't have to be a 50-50 split of that room, but it gives you some flexibility if you're about 60-40. So a lot of programs can happen in one space or you have the ability to break it down into two independent spaces. It wants to be adjacent to a kitchen. So this kitchen would be a full service commercial kitchen. The kitchen would be able to serve into and supply food into the central meeting room. It also is adjacent to a congregate meals dining room for 50 people. The congregate meals dining room is its own space. It could be used as a congregate meals dining room. But it could also, because it's adjacent to the kitchen, be used for cooking classes, could be used for other uh, functions that you want adjacent to, adjacency to the kitchen if there's something going on in the central meeting. 
we have two general purpose small meeting rooms. We have one general purpose large meeting room. The large meeting room would seat 60. The small meeting rooms would seat 30. Now that's in addition to this central meeting. We have large meeting room, dividable, two smaller meeting rooms, and then the larger one for 60. The space in the middle is furniture storage. So furniture storage can be supplying furniture to any one of these spaces. It's a centralized furniture storage because the meeting rooms are designed with flat floors, movable furniture like you see here. So you can reconfigure the spaces as needed, bring in tables for dining, set them up, roll them out. So there's some flexibility in all of this as to the use and the function. But that's the occupancy that they've asked for, for this, this function. Low impact exercise. One space for low impact exercise. And this was sized for a class size of 25. If they want to do instructional, they want to do it in a class size that's manageable. Instead of putting a lot of people in that room that you've now made a, a classroom larger than you need for instruction. So this was a, a room that could be programmed for instructional, for, for yoga, for, for low, low impact exercise. Also a fitness room. If you're familiar with the community center's fitness room, it's about 1,500 square feet currently. They're asking for the same size here. So it's not getting any smaller, it's not getting any bigger, it's just really taking the function that's being provided today and duplicating it in this facility. So we have fitness. Now I'm gonna start back at the lobby. Administrative offices. I didn't break it down into all the individual offices that are asked for, that's described. But this is the total square footage that you see in that summary sheet for all of the ad admin offices. It's near the front door and, and it has multiple breakdowns of, of who gets an office, what's the general office, all of the staffing that's gonna be needed there plus future staffing. So that's the admin offices here. Adjacent to a break room, they're required to have a break room uh, for, for lunches. It's part of their uh, union contract that they're, they're allowed a break room. And then there's an area here for vending. Vending machines would be really nothing to do with the kitchen. This is if you have something, a function that's happening here at the gym, you have teams that are coming in, they'll have access to vending machines if they just want to get, get soda snack. And, and it's really separate from any food being provided here. It's an area for vending machines. Next to that is a game room. Similar to the function that's happening in the community center now. Uh, it's an expanded area for games. You can uh, read about the, the game room requirements. That's the size in comparison to the, the building. A living slash reading slash library. It's like a living room setting, reading room setting, library, smaller scale. You can use it for waiting, use for reading. It, it's just a quiet space. It could be really an aesthetic place within the facility that Anybody could go just to get away from the, maybe the, the programs or waiting or, or needing a place to, to have to use the library resource. The senior center has it now. They have a wonderful program of, of book loans. Uh, books come in, books go out. Uh, and so they have that currently at the senior center. A health room. A health room has its own bathroom, but that's where you can do foot care. You could do dental care. This is a health room where they have outside consultants come into the facility and offer their services to citizens. It's organized now through Tina and the, the senior center. They're running these programs currently for, for uh, just like we said, any, any contracted service can come in 
at a at a cost to provide low cost services to seniors and residents for, for health reasons. Some are free. Some are free. Yes. Medical supply. Medical supply is for your equipment for medical supply. It's not a medical loan closet. This is more of your medical requirements of the building. And then in the corner is seasonal storage. These buildings can't have enough storage. Seasonal storage for this description is you know, at the end of the year, a lot of your outside fields close down. But the, all this equipment has to come back and get stored before it then gets, goes back out to the fields again. That's one seasonal aspect of it. But another seasonal aspect is they decorate for certain seasons through the year. So they, they have revolving decorations and revolving things with like Santa's workshops. And, so they need storage for these rotating seasonal items. A very large open space is a gym. You see the size compared to the other components. And we talk a lot about size. How big? What's, what's the need? The need here represents a high school basketball court with bleachers on one side, team space on the other side, and ability to screen this off to make two sides so you can have a full court basketball game going for, for uh, sports, or you could have multiple pickleball games going at once with a divider down there. It's an indoor recreation area for 12 months out of year. Moving bath, lockers and showers. Lockers and showers supporting a community pool. The community pool also has a pool viewing area. If you bend a lot of these pools, you see that that's also a component. If there's, if there's something that is in the pool, you have to have an area for people to be viewing the activities in the pool. And you don't want those people on the pool deck observing what's happening in the pool. You really want to keep spectators away just because there's a process of people needing to go through the locker room, go through the showers to get to the pool deck. So it's a very controlled uh, entry position for that and viewers want to be a part of the, the uh, pool, but maybe not want to go through that whole process. They just want to watch their young ones have swimming lessons or pool activity. So there's a there is a separate and distinct viewing area to that. As far as the pool, a lot of discussions about is it a need? Is it a want? Again, my position in this whole exercise is I'm not the one to determine it. I'm the one to listen. I'm the one to tell the council if it's a need, it should be this many square feet. We had a lot of conversations about this and the determination was, yes, this is a need. It should be in the project. It should be in the proposal, it should be in the needs assessment. Now, how big? And, and we had a lot of conversations about pools and pool water temperatures, and there's a temperature for seniors, and there's a temperature for competition, there's a temperature for. So, yeah, it can get to be a real lengthy conversation. It's not, let's have a pool, it's got to be for what? And I think the subcommittee has concluded that they, they've reached consensus that this pool wants to be able to be uh, here for competition purposes. That's only one of the uses of this. Six lanes is decided to be the right size for the number of lanes for the competition. You might read that you need eight lanes. Well, is that a want or a need? I mean, we've got to be able to really say collectively, we understand this and, and six lanes is the solution. We can do it with six. Yeah, eight might be better, but can we do it with six? It, it could be for swimming lessons you know, in addition to competition. It could be for, for seniors. It could be for youth. 
there's an also an interest here to make this pool kind of an indoor-outdoor environment for summertime activity balls. Because Berlin has a tradition of outdoor pools, but that tradition of outdoor pools is slowly going away. Is, is there a way that this could be a summertime location for families to come and feel like they still have kind of an outdoor environment? Can we open up a wall and make this kind of an indoor outdoor? If that was the right environment at the right time, obviously there's going to be times when it's going to be closed down. We control, we control the environment, we control the time. But these are trying. We've had, you can tell we've had a lot of conversation. Can we do this? Can we do that? And it always challenges them back to say, "We can do whatever you want, but this has got to this has got to be done. We want to do something. If we just start piling on, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. The concern is this is going to get back up to 50, 60, 60 65,000 and we want something to, to go, but we want it to be right. So look at that and think about that when you look through your document. Is it something that you can really endorse? And I think, and I've had conversations with people I know in town too. And I just ask them off the cuff if I'm saying, what do you think about the pool in Berlin? You know, overwhelmingly, I found that there's support. Whoever I talk to, you know, my social circle is not that large. But they, they say, I, I think the school needs it. I think the, the children need it. I think that the town needs it. Now. So I think there is support. But I think that support is getting back to, we all need to start this with a, a new effort. And if the new effort has the right energy, then hopefully this won't sit on a shelf. In addition to the interior spaces, we talked about exterior considerations on page 15. And exterior considerations are just not just what are the needs are of the facility, but what are the needs of the site. How many places for parking? How many spaces for staff? There is a fleet vehicle parking in the closed area for four vans to get four vans in and secured and locked uh, on the site and setting the parked up and parking. So some of these have some cost uh, <laughs> implications also. If it does not have a square footage next to it, it's not that I forgot it. But it means that's a requirement of the site, but it really doesn't have a square footage component. It's just flagpoles and signs. That's not changing the size of the, the site. If, if it does have a square footage next to it, like the dumpster enclosure, yeah, I have to, I have to accommodate that on the site. If you go to page 17, <clears throat> we've added up the site requirements, the building footprint, uh, future expansion potential, landscape setbacks. And I'm projecting that this building needs a buildable four and a half acres of land. I'm not controlling where it's going to be built, but if you're going to build this facility, you need four and a half acres. That's just for general. This, this, this is the generic document. This can travel around town. Can it go here? Can it go here? Can it go here? Can it go here? Where it gets built is above my pay grade, but at least the council has a parameter of four and a half acres, 50,000 square feet. Uh, when I was in a haste to send this to Jen at the last minute to get it to you, I forgot to put draft up at the top. Every other copy that I printed out to the subject has always said draft at the top. And I and I kicked myself after I said it because this did not say draft. This is a draft. And until 
You recorded. It. It's covered. You know yeah, it. Send it to me in draft uh, when I post it in a minute. I should. Yeah. This is a draft. Yep. I need to report back to the council by end of April, early May. I can take as long as it takes because this is important. And this is really important. I need now beyond the subcommittee. The subcommittee is why they put you in this room tonight. The subcommittee is now reaching out to you also to say we need to understand this and get our hands around it. If you want me to walk through this page by page, I'm happy to, but I think I've given you the explanation of how it's put together, how it's uh, structured. I, I don't know who we ask questions. No. Let, let me, if I can, just yeah. let me add just a couple of things um, that you should all understand. The subcommittee also revisited other towns, senior and community centers. We have visited many in the first round. We selected a few that we wanted to go back to and ask questions. And we met with the staff at the towns. Um, and so we went to uh, Rocky Hill. We went to Wyndham. And we went to Cheshire, who has an indoor aquatic center. It's huge. Um, but we wanted to understand how you can incorporate an indoor outdoor facility for a pool. And they have them. Uh, they have various garage doors that open up, and out there is, you know, some picnic benches, uh, some coverings, you know, in certain areas. And they're they're moving on to now a a beautiful concert and the theater area. So, but but our focus was on an indoor outdoor pool. The reason why the pool is definitely a need is obviously there's been a lot of discussion. Our commission um, is looking at closing the more Dinda pool because of the cost to refurbish it. And we'll know more about that later in April. But at this point, it was closed last year. It, won't, it will be closed this year as well. Um, so we will have one outdoor pool, and that's Percival. Percival's old, 50 years old. Uh, it's gonna require a lot of work at some point in the next couple of years. You close down a pool, do a lot of work, you don't have a pool. And what towns and other towns in our area have done, even if there are other entities that have a pool in their town, is they have an indoor pool somewhere. A lot of them have it at their high school. But unfortunately, when we built the high school, that was one of the things that was removed to save money. So we don't have an indoor pool, other towns do. They also have outdoor pools. But in this, looking for a vision for the future, which our town needs to do more of that, and obviously our commissions, we try as best we can, but it's really important for a town to have a vision. And you need to start planning for the next phase of some aquatic activities for the entire community year round. Other towns do. Um, the staff on Brian's last sheet where he did the schematic, we asked the staff to sit down. They did this, it took a while, but we said, take your programs, take the programs that we want to do, that we do now actually, and make sure this, this 50,000 square feet is going to do it for us. And let's see if we got a little extra room to make sure that we can do some other programs that we wanted to. They were able to accomplish that. There is some smaller space in the general purpose room that's still open. Uh, the gym, there's still some area of the gym, not all of it, but there's still some area. It's for the busiest time that we want our community and senior centers right now. So, so we feel that this is sufficient. Uh, for what we do now and for future programs that we want to do. What we don't have, we don't have the, the gym and uh, and we don't have a pool, you know, in our current senior center. So if you took Ryan's square footage, and he gave it, it's about 30,000, senior center and us, 30,000. You take 50,000 and you take out, you know, uh, 24,000 for the pool and the gym, it leaves you with 26,000. 
would become more efficient with this design than what we currently have in two facilities. And we're able to do much, much more than what we have. We're able to do what other towns are doing and have been doing for the last few years. And, and you know, I, I believe in all my heart, and I'm so convinced on this, this is the right move for our community. Um, obviously, you know, we know it's an uphill battle going forward, um, but, you know, the, the, this is, once designed, this can be something that really makes our community just pop, just pop. It's awesome. The other thing, some people might ask, 72,000 to 50, what did you cut? It's important for you to know what we cut. What we cut is about 4,000 out of the pool area. Why? We got rid of the water, separate water therapy pool. Some people talked about three pools. There were no three pools. It was a little hot tub, but yeah, we got rid of the hot tub too. So about 4,000 square feet coming out of the pool area. Uh, we incorporated in the last design, which made a lot of sense, the social and youth services along with the pool pantries to have it as part of the community and senior center. Okay, we removed that space because part of Brian's uh, task was also to talk to the departments that need, that have a need for the current community center and the current senior center. Berlin Housing Authority has a great need to take over the current senior center, 8,000 square feet. Why? They need housing. And they would have done it a couple of years ago if they could. They need it. And they own, they own that. And they own it. We rent, they own it. We rent the space for a buck. So, uh, and we all know the problems that we have at the senior center park is terrible, blah, blah, blah. It's too small. But the uh, current community center, 1999? Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, here it is, 2024. So 25 years, it was supposed to be a temporary community center. The library was supposed to be able to take over that room. And they do have a need to take over that room or that area. In addition, the we agreed with the library though, you know, social and youth services and food pantry, that might be a good area. Think about the game room, you know, in the food pantry, people drive up. There, uh, there's a tremendous need. Social and youth services, their meeting, their their desks now are in a meeting room in the town hall because there's no room. So that also would be important. Um, so, so we got rid of uh, youth services, food pantry, because we figure that can be done in the uh, in the current community center, we focus more on the rooms. Really talking a lot about tables, size of tables, chairs, number of people, what programs would we run where, and as a result, the room sizes in total, if you were to add them all up, compared to the other seventy-two thousand, have been reduced. We got rid of a small retail uh, senior area for shopping, uh, thrift shop, and uh, hair salon. Um, and it's, Brian calls it the central meeting room. It was called the multi-purpose room right off the kitchen. Um, that was a much larger room than what we have now. That was actually a, few thousand, a couple thousand square feet. It does fit, I think, 150, mm -hmm. thereabouts uh, people in that room. Um, how does a big room like that get used? Go to the senior center. You know, go when there's New Year's Eve day celebrations. You got all these seniors, probably a little over 100. Um, people working in the kitchen, handing out meals, blah, 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 blah. They also have their lunches daily. And that is why we did put in a separate congregate meeting room. We see that a lot at these other centers. It allows. If you don't use it, you can use it for a meeting room if you need to. Okay. Um, I think that that's really all I wanted to say. I want to turn over for questions. And if I could just say, I'm sorry, just one other thing. We will not be voting on this tonight. We want you to digest it. You know, questions, answers. If there's other questions, we're going to ask you to email them in or whatever. The Parks and Rec will take a vote in our April meeting. On, on this, and then aging on commission, you're going to take a vote 
If you're asking me questions such as what does the floor plan look like, I can't answer that. Oh, right. Right. Uh, yeah. If it's if it's about a need, then yeah. that, that's where the question yeah. needs to be focused on. Yeah. Are you seeing a need that's not satisfied here? And maybe it's not identified specifically, but it may have been a discussion that we have had that we're going to use rooms for multiple uses. So there may be an answer to that. Um, if it's a question or if you really can state the need for any of these spaces that are too small and need to get bigger, those are the questions we need to, to field now. And, and we can revise this document, we can update the square footage. I don't see that it's going to be a, a big shift in numbers when we right size this to any of your questions. We're probably still going to be in that 50,000 plus or minus range. Um, so yeah, I think that's where you can add value to this document. So I can't ask another question other than yeah, no, yeah. go ahead. <laughs> no, because I, I wanted a clarification on a couple of things. Yeah, that's please, a yeah. First of all, great job. Um, so on the original twenty nine thousand plus change, is that net or is or gross? The your original, original, like original twenty dollars. Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. No, the original twenty nine cases that are sorry, the current facility that you gave that's your gross. existing twenty one seven one six seniors. Those are gross. Those are gross. Okay, that's the first question. That's gross. All right. Second question. So Donna, to your point, basically if you take what that twenty nine and you add the approximately twenty thousand to the pool of your gym. That's your twenty thousand square feet. So that so got that's, more efficient. That's, so you got you got more efficient. Next that's question. Very fast. So, math. so essentially, if I'm understanding, to build something these days, is, is it approximately three hundred fifty dollars a square foot? Is that what you guys are running at? What are we running double, at? Double it. It's double it. Okay. All right. So I wasn't sure if that's what I was asking the question. Um, and then. As it relates to the acreage, right? Does anyone know what the square foot on the acreage is? Seven. They're seven. Across from the high, high school, school for everybody's benefit, the old plan designated across from the high school that space to be used, and there were seven acres. So this could fit there. It's all open now. Right. Who knows where you know it might be or if, if we move forward with this or whatever. Right. And, then, and then the last question I have based off of our audience of the citizen that started off with the locker rooms. Um, did we get any input about the locker rooms from anyone on the swim team or the coaches or the high school or anything to basically look at the sizes or do we take it based off of what we think the usage is? Just trying to make sure that we don't miss a beam on that one. Right. It's yeah, up there to, to the audience point. of the citizens. We noted that, that um, again, we didn't do square footage, Brian did, yeah. but we, to make sure that we could use this pool for competitive purposes, we got all the requirements from uh, the, the school, the AT, uh, Dan Thurston, the swim coach, as well as you know, design of the locker rooms. Didn't talk about square footage. That okay. was right. Yeah, to answer here. your question, I think we can research that a little more to see if we yeah, can. I, I just want to make sure. No. Okay, yeah. that was it. That was not something that we got from the AT. We did or have the, family. I saw that. I, 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 that area is for one family at a time. They go in, they change as family, they go into the pool. And that's the norm at a community yeah. pool. You don't need more than one family. Yeah. We, yeah. Oh, what, one last thing. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. One last thing. Your opening comments where you talked about existing buildings, multiple build, buildings, et cetera, et cetera. I, I don't think that it could be functional as you just outlined there if you're going into multiple locations or facilities. I think that would be. <laughs> not a good use of anyone's money uh, because now you're separating everybody from probably the whole concept of being together in this community uh, involvement. Um, that type of thing. So, I, I can I can include that commentary within my presentation to the council, but again, if it's coming from a collective voice, yeah, um, it only supports what I might say. Sorry for that, Adam. That's a good, good point. Yeah, just one question. Uh, with regards to the pool, Mr. Joseph, you kind of you know, you know, as well. That pool, does it meet, I assume it does, minimum requirements, or is that the optimum requirements for a high school swim? 
it meets minimum requirements. You need six lanes to run the competition. And you spoke to the athletic director and the coach. They both said eight would be great, but if you're asking us what we need versus what we want, six is sufficient. And it does include the diving well, so the diving team will be able to be there too. The one thing we did do is we added an extra foot to the end, to the 13. What's required right now is 12 for diving competition, but they may move to 13. And so what we, we, we said one foot deep in one area isn't going to make a difference. The other thing on the pool is we talked to a number of towns and every one of them talked about Make sure when you have your your pool, yes, competition needs to be able to run. You know, so this should be good for the high school, okay? But the community, and that's that's this pool is going to be more used by the community than by the high schools, okay? And they said make the shallow end longer, a bigger part of the pool, because that's a mistake they made. Because you can run various programs with it and still you know you got the deep end for the diving but the laps for the competition they can still use that area you know it's, you're not, so that's that's one of the things we want to make sure that we do shallow end would be a little longer extended than the normal pool area so that seniors and you know honestly if you go to other senior community centers take a look and when you see those seniors in the pool, I got pictures. I mean, there's there was at Wyndham, there was probably 25 seniors in the pool doing their exercises and you know, just so they and dancing and everything. And it was just really, really encouraging. So it, it's uh there's there's just so much out there for the pool. But but on the locker rooms, as Tim mentioned, you know, that's something that we need to follow up. So just kind of a follow-on question. Where in the water? That's a six lane pool. But six lane has no diving pool, it has no diving pool front. And it's, I think it's a straight four or five foot uh, depth. And then the kids. I'm going to have to jump Tim, I'm sorry, but you got to talk this way. I'm sorry. Think, uh, uh, Tim, you got to come up if you're going to answer a question. I, I have to hang it up. So you were asking about the new pool. I was um, asking about sorry, Meredith. Meredith. The game. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Meredith. my last question. Kids still compete in flat? <clears throat> just, just loud enough so that people are still competing. Yeah, what's actually kind of funny is not only does the Berlin Y or the Berlin High uh, kids use flat as when they're uh, uh, competitive swim meets, but nowadays the Meriden uh, Y SEALs don't have their competitive meets at their Y. They have them at flat or Maloney High School too. So yeah. just so. Just and I'm just trying to visualize how big. So flat. How many lanes is that? She's exactly right. Most pools are six lanes. Six. Okay. All right. When they put in, they first put in eight. Six is a must. Eight is a. A nice to have. Nice to have, but it'd be great. I can tell you that in the first study that we did, uh, we talked about eight lanes, and uh, down in Newtown they put in eight lane. Uh, or actually, they looked at an eight lane and decided it's six, nope. but it cost a million dollars more for the two lanes. And that was 2020 that they built it because it's been in there a couple of years. Yeah, so, I'm trying to visualize yeah. how big is it, a six lane pool. And I think to the it's the size of the merit of why, but yeah, it would be yeah. Cool. Yeah. And just uh, you mentioned about a diving well. I don't want people to get confused. When they say a diving well, they're talking about a different facility with a diving board. You know, the plans on this were <clears throat> the pool with a 13 to 12 or 12 or 13 foot depth at one end with a diving board. It's all one. Right. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. Wasn't sure. Right. Yeah. It's um, a diving area. Right. The, the meets, they're just yeah. usually one school versus one school. It's not like. Well, it doesn't. <clears throat> like I said the other day, uh, like Brantford uh, schools, Brantford High School had a meet at their, you know, for the states. And there was like 17 or 18 teams that were there. So I, I was glad to see that you put the, you know, the seating area as big as you would. If I say anything else, you can also use it for, um, one thing Berlin does not have is a feeder program. I was talking to this gentleman, Tom Barag and all these other ones had feeder programs. You could have a feeder program out of this. We, we do have summer swim teams 
but it'd be great to have a year round swim team for younger kids. So the viewing area, the uh, where parents would come, I mean, it would be sufficient enough to hold multiple schools for a competition. I mean, it's going to start getting, uh, you don't want to have, you don't want to go through this whole thing and then you know, we do a three team meet and everyone's complaining that there's no yeah. sick, right? Right. Yeah, even, even if you put enough seating in, they'll complain that there's not enough seating. Yeah, yeah. We just, the state trials were a cornerstone of the aquatic over in West Hartford. And it's so, a huge pool. Yeah. Am I on the line? Yeah. Oh. Yes. <laughs> I was just going to say, though. Oh. So for the state meets where there's a lot of competition going on, I would think that this pool would not be one that they would consider for state meets because of the size. There are aquatic centers, Cornerstone and West Hartford. They're public aquatic centers. It's huge, much bigger than this. Cheshire, huge. Those are the places. Those are, they're big. We could host a conference. Mm -hmm. We could hold conferences. Yeah. We could hold right. a, a, a slash yeah. Yeah. What they've done really well is they've taken the, the thought of both Cornerstone and Cheshire have, <clears throat> they could be called uh, movable bleachers that are right on the deck. And you have people, you know, Barbara, I want you to come to one of our swim meets but I want you to step up to the area that's not along the deck. Right. And we have class eight facility in Sage Park, field, you know, baseball, softball, you know, and we can go in this direction. Well, we ask them to Well, we can we can look in you know, again, confirm what the size would be and let me know whether or not this would confirm, conform to it, or what it would take to, to add to it. The one thing I do want to say, too, that we all need to think about is we, we, we want to move forward. We don't want to chip ourselves at all. Don't want to do that. But this is a community pool. This is a community and senior center. And although sometimes even at our community center, we rent out things like taxis and you know, the, the tax collectors still pay us rent you know, to use our rooms. We're not building that list for this. We're building it for our town of Berlin, the 20,000 people that are here and, and the future town that it will be. And uh, you know, I'll say my opinion, competition, I wanna make sure that our high school is well representative with the assets that we have here in town. But to me, that is, I'll say, a secondary issue to the other, you know, people in our population from six months, sorry, Barbara, to 87 or 90 or 103 years old. I want everybody to be able to use this pool and move forward with something. And we all know class is going to come into this. The other thing that I will mention uh, is that the town council separately is looking at the Y as an alternative, and they will that's excluded. Brian is not involved in it, okay? No. But they're looking at the Y, and you know, they'll be studying that, so there'll be plenty more discussion. <clears throat> the Y did present to the town council uh, a few weeks back, and the one change that he made is to make sure that he includes a pool in his current design. And he said it would be a competitive pool, kind of similar to what we have here, you know, to say that. Um, he, he previously, when we talked to him a couple of years ago, he didn't want to have a pool because it's expensive and he doesn't want to necessarily focus on that. The Y makes its money on childcare. So, but now he's saying that he will do. Uh, we'll we ask Brian, Brian has yeah. to leave. Do we have any last questions? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. So on the population, can you break down the other pieces on there? We too? have a proxy. I'll, I'll we do have that data. Okay, yeah. good. And then um, I noticed you talked about solar panels on top. Are we gonna, wouldn't we want to use those? That, that's a conversation for another day. You're saying there that we'll put, I know this, this the answer is the same. He be ready yeah. in, in, in there. Um, and that's as far as we have to have the conversation today. 
just like everybody else, I have one more question. So the the difficult thing for me, and that was helpful, is that I'm a, a visual person. Right? Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's great that we have all these little boxes. But what my concern is, I guess I'm asking you, from an aesthetics perspective, trying to understand that we want to group these different age groups together and to make it aesthetically pleasing and to have it be, you know, a positive experience for everybody to draw people in. Can we do that within that? No space. And there are examples out there today that do this. They combine for the meetings in your centers to do an attractive solution. And for me as the architect, as an architect, for me, that's the fun part of the process. I mean, getting through the space needs is actually, yeah, that has to be done and it has to be done right. But I really want to get into the design. And yeah, that, that's the fun part. It could be very attractive. Cool. Thank you. Roger. Two quick uh, questions, comments. As far as the block room plan, it sounds like you focused on the swing team needs, but did you look at also like sort of lessons where you're going to have many more parents? Classes going on at once where it doesn't look like that's going to be big enough to handle the flow of class coming in right now. Then we can revisit that. Yeah. Just, you're going to have multiple classes going on at one time, but you'll have some chain builders. So, and no, no kind of locker room or uh, team space off the gym. You will let me lock the fingers. <laughs> We have staff space and we have storage space that is supported the phone. Yeah, the adult men's league, you want to try to change, change the bathroom. It's not a lot. But it has to be a lot of work. You can't do just that area. So, the gym. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Um, Depending on the site, depending on the topography, oh. yes. I know that site slowed down. So yeah. You would have to look at whatever the site conditions are to see what's the most efficient way to put this together. If, if it was possible, we'd rather just one floor because you eliminate elevator, which is very costly, and stairs and other things. So. Understand. And the pool, have you talked about like a gradual entry or like a splash pad, like play bill? Did that get kind of as the cost? We talked about splash pad specifically because that's really a whole different spin. Whether a splash pad is, is an outdoor feature, uh, it's not in the space needs assessment because the need was for the pool. We felt we could do more with the pool than a splash pad. It doesn't mean that this facility can't grow over time either. Splash like, you know, pad. Those areas just like crazy. You can't like birthday parties and like yeah. a gradual entry there. We don't have a gradual entry pool anymore, you know, in town. And it's huge. Like you couldn't even get into that place to, you know, it's just always so busy. Newtown, Newtown has the same thing. And Cheshire currently is um, looking at putting a splash pad in their aquatic center. So unfortunately, we were asked to reduce the size. And you know, the new and upcoming is going to incorporate those types of things. Um, and some, you know, some like playing known as a right, so it's a wide and uh, so you know, get enough space, get the pool in an area where you can expand. That that would be another phase of it. But uh, the commission is looking at putting a splash pad over these for a land to replace the demorans in the pool if it works out. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Brian, thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. And any <laughs> any more detailed questions, you know, just email to Jen. Yeah, um, get it to them. And we'll get it to them. We'll get written answers and you know we'll send it out. And if well, we need to, we can always have another meeting. It's, it's, yeah, okay. it is it that's is service. important that we get this all out. So uh, I know we owe you the, we're gonna send them out the diagram so that they can then this is draft up. Draft and population breakdown. I have, and uh, and that's it, right? That's all, yeah, right? Thank you. I have one question. You know where I sit. Thank you. 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 Thank
which one's that? I, I, I don't know. Honestly, with yeah, yeah, I know. Kept changing. Changing. Kept, I didn't want to ask. Kept on getting There's so many different plans and no idea. And I was just curious. Yeah. Like, he's all this back here, all this renovation. Yeah. That's what they're well, doing. the only reason why I was asking is that their needs was the same situation, right? Where it was 15 and then they asked them to go to 20. And then, you know, I, I, my concern is, is that how far, how far are they going to go? Council to do this. Yeah. You know? Right, and I think we all, each of us has to take that into consideration. Um, I will tell you from my personal opinion, Barbara, please, this is it. Yeah. This is the minimum. Well, this is it. You know, There's no going. I need to be the wise guy of the group. Uh, we went through this three years ago with a larger building at the same cost. Right, and the price doubled, but it's smaller. And yeah. it's the same money. Right. So, right. so now it's in which way, you know, you look back and you say, Oh, boy, I wish we did it. Right? 35 but, million, 35 million here, just based on what he said. You know, well, I, I, I was surprised he said because he's actually he's been telling us about it. Other prices, so yeah. I will wait. He's he needs to do a little more work to finalize the cost. I asked him that. So why is going to come back and you're going to come back with a competitive pool? So there's there's well, this, you know, this, if I, I'll just, as, as a park and rec commissioner and as a taxpayer, this is it for me. This is it. I've been through enough. And I say not I, but the town has been through enough. Make your decision and move on. But this is what the town needs. I want you, I'll bring the council over to Rocky Hill. I'll bring them to Newtown. I'll bring them to Winscott. Uh, Wind them. Wind them. I'll bring them anywhere they want to go. And if you go in there and you see the population, and but it's tremendous. That's not why the, Hill. That's not what we need to do. We need to show them why the why model doesn't doesn't work. Yeah, that doesn't really need the needs assessment for the senior centers. So. Well, that that in itself, but but they'll they'll but they can say anything they want. They can say, oh yeah, we're going to do senior program. Oh yeah, well that's what. It's, Oh yeah, no problem. Price and, too. Well, whatever. But I mean, they I can don't say see that. What doing? I don't see the why doing it. Correct. Never done it. Correct. But they can say that okay. to appease the powers to be. But they've already said they're not going to do any right. type of kitchen area, which is very big. But this is the why. The why. Right. I know. So they, again, they, I think. I think, I think instead of going what they're going to say or not say, it's a bit the, our ability as a community to show. Okay. Show me where the Wyoming community municipal government have partnered and it has worked successfully. The mayor talks about two places, Virginia and California. <laughs> Very different than New England. They are not New England. It's two commissions, right? We know, I know for a fact, the YMCA ran the Ridgefield Community Center and overnight locked their doors and walked out. That that's a fact. They did it in Wyndham as well. So so there's there's two instances where we say, hmm. The YMCA got bailed out in Britain by a million dollars by the state. They have two ancient facilities. What are they going to do to offset those crumbling facilities for the brand new right. world? Right, but they're not going to they're not going to close those two. No. They're going to funnel off money from the new shiny facility to pay for the other two. So that means over time, the money that should have been going back into the new facility, not have gone back into the new facility. We'll go back into these older facilities so then all of a sudden, oh, they're fine. And Burlands is not because they've been waiting to repair things because they needed it and we have a facility. <laughs> but those are the those are the components I think we need to somehow bring to light in a public format to show that is the why really a viable solution for what the town of Berlin wants to do. Yeah, Oh, again, as, as much as we're going to get. It's here for people to see. What do we have? Four people? Yeah, well, the, no, I'm sorry. I talk to people and I hear, oh, what? Oh, they're going to do that? When did you hear that? I didn't hear that. It's like we dropped into a big black hole and we're sitting. I'm, yeah, there's That's not a lot point. of talk about it. We try and make it as public as we can, but, you know, and, and people, you know, they have busy lives or whatever, yeah. and they decide yeah. they can't get involved. Roger, I agree. There's ways to do that kind of outside of the commission discussion, but absolutely that for people that want an intergenerational community and senior center 
much like other towns have. Uh, this is a great plan. And the why we'll like be presenting to hear about it. But how do we get them to hear about it? That's the biggest problem. Well, you need you need the community to get together as a group and get the word out and talk to various groups around. And there's you know there's ways to do that. There's things called PACs, political action committee. And that's you know, at some point that's what's if the if the town wants it, you, you establish a PAC and you have a goal, you know, just say this is the goal. You want to get this done. And that's what you need to do because you need to advertise, you need to yeah. put up signs, you know, eventually. There's more to learn on the why. I want to try and be fair to the why. They they presented a general plan at the council, no detail. There'll be more to come. The mayor said he's, you know, we'll have them back. I maybe this report, you know, is done for the town, and then they turn this over to the Y and they say, Can you do it? Uh, what can't you do? You know, I don't I don't know. But there'll be more once that once that information is identified, then people have to make a choice, and those that want something have to go after it, and you have to come together as a community and get it done. Don, I have a question. When John presented at the town council, yes, did he state that it was going to be a Berlin Y, or is it going to be a Tri Town? It would. Uh, it would be a Y in Berlin. The Y requires. But it's going to be a Tri Town. Yeah, they, so, uh, they're, they're all part of the same. Right. It's. It's, it's not going to be called New the Berlin Britain. Y, or is it going to be called the Tri Town Y? Right. Yeah. yeah. Berlin, New Britain, Merritt, and Y. And that's the why the Y organization is set it up. Like Plainville, Y belongs to Hartford. Putnam Y, which is the newest Y built in the state, belongs to, which we visited, by the way, a couple years ago, belongs to Hartford. You know, so John Benigni has Berlin, Meredith, and uh, New Britain. So, so you build it, but anybody that's a Y member can use it. I mean, that's, right. you know, that's the reality. And, they have a mission and they do a great job with what they have. It's not this, it's not our programs, it's not an intergenerational community senior center. And he'll tell you that. Oh, I know that. Yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, he, I've been in those meetings. Yeah. But they, they do have activities. So physical activities. I just want to say when we started this a couple of years ago, we were going to do just a senior center. And then we came up with the idea of a senior center, community center, which I think is wonderful. But Don is being more generous than I am. When we had two years ago a meeting with the Y, they had no programs for the seniors. They were strictly, their focus is childcare. He told us that. I think that's very important, childcare. But senior care is important also. And to have a better senior center where we can do more programs and intergenerational for with, I think this plan, Brian's come up with a wonderful plan. And I think that we should support this 100% because if we don't do it now, we wait two more years and it's going to cost so much more again. Yeah. I mean, I think we have to, the problem I have is the they don't have a vision. If you see this in other towns, you can see the whole town coming together in this building. And I think that's so important. That's the vision that we need to send exactly. out. Exactly. And I, I'm i sorry, but I, when we had two years ago, the meeting with the Y, they only talked about child care, no senior programs. He says, we, and he told us right out, we do nothing for the seniors. All of a sudden he came back, what was it, a couple of weeks ago, and he had a list of programs for the seniors in addition to a pool. Now, how did he come up with this all of a sudden when they're like a million dollars in the hole? You know, I'm sorry, Don is giving them the benefit of the doubt. I cannot do that. Well, I and just to clarify, uh, so why does, does it a couple of years ago when it came, they do do certain activities for all ages, including seniors. Okay, they do have water aerobics in their pool in Meriden for the seniors. Um, it doesn't mean they work with the senior center. They do it independently. And, you know, they, Meriden has its own senior center as well. Uh, Meriden has three, 
well, two indoor pools at their high schools, two high school indoor pools by the town. The Y that has a pool, and of course, then they have a couple outdoor pools and things. But so Meriden's a much bigger population than us. But they there when he said no programs, what he what he said was there are programs, there are activity physical right. based physical. programs. Right. Right. Uh, and that's that's what he that's what he offered a couple of years ago. That's what he's offering now. And Barbara's right. He did say, oh, I can make a game room so you can play setback. But he doesn't understand our setback program. You know, you fill your... Well, your there's, there's much space. more to a senior center right. than just, you know, know after right. Right. right, which is important. Yeah. But there's so much more. And yes. example, today, every room in our facility was full right. Wednesday. I was telling Jen, we had to double up in our offices because even our offices were being used. So um, we're, we're, we're running out of space. We're getting more members. They're looking for programs that other towns are having. There's... They're joining other towns because we don't have it. We don't. Why don't you have what Rocky Hill has? Because we don't got the space. We don't got the budget. We don't have the parking. We don't got the parking. That's another thing. Yeah. Rocky Hill had like 400 senior members. Yeah. They built this facility. Yeah. 2,100 seniors now signed up. Good. 26 are from Berlin. They go to Rocky Well, Hill. there's more now. There's other towns. I mean, Donna, there's more now because so my senior. Oh, members. now they know. Yeah. See, now they're listening and they're, they're joining. What's up. Yeah. So, but in any event, uh, and, and how many do, but so you have all these members. How many do you get a day? 150 to 200 people come in for the senior activities a day. In the meantime, over at the gym, they got other things going on. They got a child uh, care, you know, a child care for people. And you, you talk to these seniors like we have that were there. We were there for a meeting at 9.30. Honestly, about quarter 10, I turn around, oh, Crap, the place is filled. They're all having coffee. They're talking. And by 10 30, ah, okay, I'll see you later. They're going to this room. They're going to this room for this activity. Yeah. You know, it's just a wonderful thing. And then they meet for lunch in the multi purpose room. It's a great thing. But what's the best part of your day? Oh, when you see those kids coming down and we're talking to the kids and everything, it's so great. I mean, that's what they'll tell you. Intergenerational. And it's the towns that are doing this. So the Y can't do that. They no. cannot do that, and they won't. It's a membership-based. So I'm going to only throw out one other thing, then. What we should look to do is build a child care wing on this community center and take away the need for the Y, run our own child care <laughs> in the community center. So yeah. we did. We did that, it's, it's a fair point. The, we didn't have child care before. We had to cut. We talked about putting in child care because some places do have it. But as we've talked to parents, even in our community, about that, you got to run it right. Right. And you got to have teachers. And quite frankly, to be fair, from where we are right now for our staff, and then to operate this. And if you add a child care right now, not to say that it's not an addition at some point, that's a whole nother level. Rocky Hill does that, but they've done it for years and right. they know how to run it. But either either you either you sub it out, contract it out to, but if you have this again, it's it's another way of thinking about but we did the, uh, all right. How do you compete with the Y? Right, well, exactly. That's I mean, if, if the wise proposal is daycare, I mean, that's the, that's where they make their money. They do. Means, they do. I mean, everyone knows that. Right. I mean, then he, you know, he wants to say, well, we gave him space at, at McGee. Well, we gave him space at McGee, but they're making hand over fist of the money right. for the services that they're doing there. So it's it's like it wasn't a fair hand over, you know, in my opinion. Uh, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know all the details, but, but they have McGee and they have Harvard. Yeah, I know that the Y paid for the build out of those rooms, but I, you know, but they do make their money on child care. I think if the Y comes into Berlin uh, and John Benigni, um, I ask, he'll he'll take all child care and move it into the Y because it makes sense, more efficient, you know, not to have all these little places out there. So I asked, 
at the town council meeting uh, that the council asked the why, how much of your square footage are going to be dedicated to childhood? Because that will tell you how much is left for everything else. You know, and it's important to understand right, as you're looking at options. Um, I asked John Benigni that and he didn't answer. So at the, at the town council. I think we have to think about this as we're doing this for the whole community yeah. and we can do swim lessons for the little kids yeah. in the morning, uh, aerobics for the women that want to come or the men that want to come later on, the swim team. And then in the evening, we can open to open the swim for a couple of nights a week if you want to. And then I know South Windsor rents out their big room for showers and baby showers and stuff like that. So it's not like we could not do that. But this should be like the center of the community. And yes. that's what we have to look at. And I think that uh, the council is having a hard time looking at that because they're looking at the money. But we have to look at what we're doing here. We want to move out 20, 30 years. And when you talk about the community center that we have downstairs now that was supposed to go to the library, how many years ago? So if we say, oh, we're going to do this now, and in five years, we'll put on a poll. That's never going to work. We have to do what we have to do now, and then we have to get the town behind it. That's the way it is. Just like the basin. So yeah. everything's been phased in, but it hasn't right. been phased out yet. Right? Exactly. You are over there. Where we are in the community center. What it's been boiled down to, what it was boiled down to all along, is why no taxes? Community center taxes. That's what. That's what. If you go to any of their meetings, and they're talking about it. When we wrote the senior center. Mayor Mark was over there. They have plus and minuses, man. All the pluses were for the Y, and you know all the my minuses were up on top. You know all the pluses. Were there. It's just it's clear where where they're going. They don't want to spend any money, right? So, so senior center is out of space. They need that it for housing. And the parking lot, if you've never been there, yeah. sucks for the seniors to the point where the seniors don't go to the senior center because they have to park up top and they That's can't right. make it down the hill. Right. That's right. And we can't, we've already, we covered, I went with Brian with the housing authority. Can they design anything with the parking lot? No, they can't do anything more. It's because they're landlocked and they're not in the public seat. Yeah. So that's already, there's a whole page on it. Okay, so you need a senior center. Okay, 20, 25,000 square feet. Rocky Hill, 20,000 square feet. With a gym, add a, add a gym to it. So you're in 30,000 square feet. And guess what? That senior center is your same community center. So the town is going to have to spend money on that anyway. And the benefit is you get a community center. That's 30,000. Okay. We got Percival Pool. A couple of years, that's going to be closed down and have to be rebuilt. Even Brian said that will have to be rebuilt in some. It was not ADA accessible. Okay. That's right. right. None of our properties are right. So, okay. So now, what's the vision in a couple of years to replace Percival? Right now, nothing. Guess or, what? Or what is the cost to replace? We we don't have that cost, but it's tremendous. It will be tremendous. But, right. We're gonna we gotta cover that in the next year's budget, quite frankly. <laughs> There's gonna there is you know we're doing it with the more the pool just to refurbish it, not to replace it fully. But but we, we're gonna study first of all next budget season because you gotta plan, you gotta get capital improvement, and all that kind of stuff. But you you can need the senior center. You get a community center with it. What do you need? You need a pool in a couple of years. You're gonna need a pool. Get an indoor pool that can be used year round. People are screaming for swimming lessons for their kids. The seniors, all of us, younger people want water aerobics. The high school needs a competition pool. You got it. You're gonna have to spend the money, plan for it. By the time this thing is built, if it was approved right now, it's two years out, two years. They're just talking with the camera. Now. So, so now, you, so you got the pool and okay. Yep, we're gonna get a chip. Why? Because the schools, you can't access any of the schools during the school hour, including playgrounds around it. 
Okay, we have programs. We can't even get guaranteed that we're going to be able to run a basketball program at the high school right now. It's an report that Deb will have for the summer because the high school may do it. That kills our program. So we need a gym. And guess what? Other towns do. And guess what happens? Now you got indoor pickleball courts, which is yeah, that's what everyone now. wants. You got volleyball. You got chair volleyball in a gym. And, and if you don't use all of that gym, the other part is. You use it for something else. Don't just go rent the one that just built on board. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm just saying the town's gonna have to move on a senior center. And if you know, I'm a senior and they'll be hearing from me <laughs> if they don't do that. I mean they're gonna have to. Because what they I have now is not good. And I think the town's stupid because the line they delayed the more it's gonna cost. It's never gonna go down. It's never gonna go down. No. No matter how you look at it, back away from it, back away from it. But it's, you know, in the end, you're just going to end up with what we have now, which is, you know, poor if you want my opinion. Go ahead, Barbara. And with the why, how do we know how long it's going to take them? They have to raise money. We have asked them uh, uh, for an assessment of needs. We never got any kind of financial thing from them, even though we asked them that two years ago when he came. So, they could they could say, all right, we have to raise money for the next three or four years, and then where does that leave us? You know, we still have to do something for the town. <laughs> to and give it all to the Y and and what's to say, oh, we have to raise money, and then they decide they don't want to have a place to go. You know, or they build it and it's not they back out and it's not what we want. Right. So I think we have to think about those things before we uh, go full speed ahead with the Y. The Wallingford Y, uh, Tim gave the presentation of the Wallingford Y beautiful aquatic center, and that's four years old right now. They haven't raised enough money. They've been trying to raise money four years. Because why? Where do they get the Y? Where do they get the Y money? Where do they get the <laughs> Yeah. We're going to be going around to our businesses, to us, mm -hmm. and asking for it. And by the way, the town, there will be some implications in the town, whether they give them land or they give them something else. That is going to be something. To, to, the Y is going to look for something. Now, maybe there's something the town can get, but the Y is a membership program. And yes, taxes, a lot of the taxes will be used to pay for this facility and the ongoing operational costs. But it's for our entire 20,000 plus people in the future. It's not. The Y membership. Has anyone, if you do the Y, you're focused on just that membership. Well, Donna, you, should someone do the analysis between the membership fee and what our increase in tax burden will be? So once we have the cost, it will, um, Kevin will do an estimated okay. based on house value. It was done. It's, it's in this report. It is very expensive. And it's expensive not only because of inflation and all that, but it's expensive because the town will only amortize the cost of the building. So say the building, just say $50 million. So, right? $50 million, they amortize it and pay it off in no more than 15 years because they want to save interest, and it does. But in the meantime, it's the people that are in that 15-year period that are paying for the facility, which is going to last 30, 50 years out. But they won't do it like a mortgage. That's just one of the things that our town has not done. They try, like the high school, they're paying it off over 15 years. It's almost done. Can Veach get us a grant of some sort? I'm sorry? Can Veach help us with anything in terms of getting answered? Right. right. Grants. There are grants out there that have been reduced by the state. The state isn't giving grants. Um, I think the sense that we have is that we can, there's more we can do as a town. Not to say our elected officials aren't trying to do everything, but you know, to be fair, we have a part time consultant that we use to look for grants and blah, blah, blah. And he's very good and does a good job. But for this type of project, like the Y, you bring in a professional person that knows national organizations, you know, parks and rec. Yeah. Parks and Rec and groups like that that you go after like how much you can get I don't know everybody tells me including the towns that have done it 
the bulk of the money will be from the town tax yeah. revenue. But but yes, and you try and you know the phase in, uh, not not the construction phase in, but you know you, you get a, maybe a million from the state to do the uh, design work, and then then you go after them for the foundation. And there have been a few people uh, that have talked to a couple of us about you know wanting to even do some work. Uh, and provide some funds for this. So that being said, it's nothing to make public, but you know, there's a couple of people talking about this. Again, the bulk will come from the town, but yeah, you gotta we, we gotta work really hard on the grants. And other towns have done that. Fire power ball tickets. <laughs> I do. No, you if anybody's gonna win it. <laughs> right. And I said if I want enough money, I would I would give money to the town to build it. I would. I would if you know uh so it is important though that as brian said that we all come together and recognize you know the different questions comments uh adjustments that need to be done at this report and we try and accomplish that in the next month so what happens do our two commissions have to get together before the and go before the council is that how that works actually each commission will vote and endorse whatever the new draft is of this report. You know, we'll we'll relook at the locker room, see if there's something that can be done, or or at least provide the information, the size of the locker rooms of other facilities, make sure that we know where we're short or not, right? And we'll do all that stuff. We'll come back with the new draft. We'll disperse it via email. Uh, our meeting is April 10th. Okay. Second yeah. Thursday in April, we're meeting. 11. And by that time, we would have liked to have all your questions answered to you <laughs> so that you're ready. You know, there could be some discussion, but we're ready to take a vote on April 10th. He's 11. He can't be any later than May 10th to his report. Okay, so Barbara, they only meet in March. Yeah, so you might have to do a special meeting, which you can do during the day at the senior center just to get your commission together. I mean, just in one of like the photography room or something, just yeah. nice and quick. To It'll still be the statement of need. Well, you're saying? we're going to give you the new copies, okay. um, and then I can get them to you possibly by Monday's meeting. You can pass them out to your commission members. Everybody go home, think about it. If they have any questions, they can get them to me, and you can call me, whatever. Um, I'll try to get questions answered, and then sometime bet between now and April 11th, because that's when our meeting is, just do like a special meeting. It'll still have to be public. It'll still have to be notified, posted within 24 hours, but you can just do a special meeting and just have one vote on the agenda. You're talking about this document, right? That's well, it. The yeah. one we got tonight. Space needs assessment, yeah. Right. I mean, so it's not a different document. No, it's no, not. It, it's, it might no. be updated. It, it might be updated. But very little right. updated. Yeah. So right. take that home and research it. There's it, very it, few changes that'll Barbara, be Barbara, I mean, we could discuss it in Monday's meeting. Yeah, yeah. We could add it to the agenda. Yep. And it would just be the locker then, rooms that are going to change, probably, right? right? Not, I mean, we got a couple layers of locker rooms, but as you read it and go through it, I heard Brian. Just any other questions. Right. All questions should go to both commissions with the answers. So both commissions, you know, you might not have asked a question, but maybe they did. <laughs> you should have the benefit of that. Right. Questions come to me. I will address them with Brian and I will send responses out. I will call Barbara with responses because she's not on email. She can share it with her commission. Just remember, Roger, I can throw you on an email. That's no problem. Just remember that when answers are being sent out, so they can't have it back and forth. Because everyone's on it. If he makes it a quorum, makes it a reliable, blah, blah, blah. This is a public document. It's out there. Yep, it'll be in the minutes it, next week. And it, it was posted it on was, the town website anyway. It today as far as and Tuesday as I know today it's, the it's, it's out there in the world. So uh, it is a draft though. So I asked Janet a question. Yeah. So I don't know. The female locker room, I mean, it's been a while, right? But I mean, typically girls were always separated. No, I'm just saying the girls were always separated. If they went into change and stuff like that, they have separate areas to do it. Take and stall. Yeah, I don't. I didn't really see that. In the so the way the showers are set, because Brian did explain this, it's it's not like old school where it's just one massive shower with shower heads. It's it's an individual shower, and then there's like this little step over, and then there's this little area with a curtain in front of it. So there's a curtain on the shower, 
then there's this little changing area where there's a curtain, and then you step out. And then there's also bathroom stalls. We already said we were going to relook at the locker rooms. Same. When was the last time you were at any sporting event? No one takes showers in the right moment. Exactly. <laughs> well, in high school, you look at the showers. I said it's been a while. Showers are now the store. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, the locker rooms. Yeah. No. A lot of that stuff, this is good, you know. Yeah, we got to recognize the input. It's not perfect. And we have a few more things on our agenda. Commission on Aging Members, thank you, but you do not have to stay for the rest of the okay. agenda if you don't want. Right? All right. I just think that's a good idea. Yeah, that should be fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So we can do it for a couple minutes. We can move on. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Good job. Oh, no. I know. I have to know that tomorrow's my day with my sister in law. Okay. Let's go. I'll make a motion. Okay. Approve our minutes. Go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from February 8th. Second. Discussion. Okay. Just a couple of comments. And I'm going to give Jen just wording changes. Uh, so with those wording changes, can you amend your motion? Sure. Um, well, you have to take the word. I don't know the word. So <laughs> let, they, let this motion fail, right. and okay. then Donna make the motion to approve the minutes when it changes. Okay. So there's a motion on the table. Let's vote on it. Okay. All in favor? Aye. No. 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 Okay. Oh, we didn't change. It. Okay. Oh, okay. There's a motion on the table. Oh, to oh, 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 accepting the minutes oh, as written. Yes. yes. Say aye. All those not in favor say yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Christina, you can't vote for more. Yeah. Good try. Good try. Yeah. Good effort. Uh, okay. I make a motion to accept the February minutes with the. Let Donna make the motion. Donna's she knows what changed. Okay, oh, I'm not sure. That's why I asked. Oh, I know, and that's what I told her. I don't know why she didn't speak. So. I'm done for the night. You make the motion. I'm going on. Go. Okay, I make a motion that uh, the, the following changes that are identified in the documents that are going to Jen. You have to say them out loud. I have to be a record of what the changes are. Okay, uh, meeting agenda. Community Senior Center update number four, um, which is on page one. I'm not sure why it's four. But uh, towards the end, it says the Community Center Senior Center have different needs and they're trying to look into the future as to what they may need. They are still concluding that there can be one facility eliminate, joined to help the community, replace with, to encourage intergenerational use and one community. Fix the margins on the next three paragraphs. <laughs> Page three. Uh, up top. Field seniors are overlooked in town. This is what Barbara said. Field seniors are overlooked in town, comma, activities at the combined community and senior center do serve a community people, not just seniors. Um, is that it? Oh, okay, sorry, page six, five, item B, end item B at moving the entrance, then start item C, which is Commissioner Delacroix noticed he's talking about a totally different subject, not the playgrounds. So that's item C, then change to D and arrow. That's it. I'll second it. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. Thank you. Consent agenda. Can I have a motion for A and B? I'd like to make a motion to accept consent agenda items A and B as written. 
Second. No second. Okay. Joe seconds. Uh, any discussion on these items? Christine, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Right. Yeah. We don't mean every month. month there will be both. There will be items the 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 There's a lot. That, <laughs> there's a lot that happen every year. So anytime you have a question, just let us know. Yeah. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Parks and Rec, monthly report. Yes. Um, let's see, one change that I brought up about the uh, high school. I did finally get approval so we can run our Skyhawks basketball and volleyball camps, which is big because we had, I think, we're up to 40 kids last year for basketball and we did like 20 plus in volleyball. So that's those two very large programs and there's nowhere else to park. So I did finally get approval on that. So Thank we'll start you. advertising. Yeah. Um, I got. One additional lifeguard application, we're still going to accept them for a couple more weeks um, doing starting issues. So, I so right now, total lifeguards? I have no idea because I was oh. on vacation, but I know we got one additional one. How many do you think you need more? Or five. I got to hire me five. I, have so, to, I don't know how many we got. Okay. I just got back. So. Right. Okay. Um, and then we advertise again for the Clover Hill site. I have not had it. Um, and I only think I have three applications for um, summer fund supervisors. So numbers are real low, but we've been advertising for around six weeks. I think. We'll continue again. To... Your budget got approved. Them. No, but it's not even supposed to be. It hasn't even been submitted. But they did include the second day They, they, yeah, they, yeah. they kept okay. the money in. Yeah. Um, but um, can I just ask on that? The, the, the summer fund, like, you know, a lot of towns. They're already taking applications for kids, so they're just because they got what's that registration? Registration, yeah. I can't if I don't know how many staff I have. No, I know, I so it's registered for a site if I put staff. Okay, so you're gonna get caught up on that and uh, see if you have any more since you have applications. No, I don't have any more summer fun staff, I know that. So we don't even have enough to run what we had last year, yeah. We do, yeah. Oh. We don't have enough for an additional site. For the second site. For the additional site. Just the second site. Yep, so I was hoping to get to be able to reopen that. Um, but yeah, the other one will start advertising mid-April and registration will be end of April. And I anticipate it filling in for you. Yeah. If you look at Facebook, everybody's asking and they're looking at other towns. I, well, I, I, I'm, I'm right at the same time schedule I've been at for 20 years. Oh, I know. Years, I'm yeah. just saying, it seems like, you know, people want to register early, take care of it. I know. The, so, without the staff, with the, without having the staff in place, I won't advertise for a program. Right. But you have the staff in place for one summer team right now. I still will. It's too early. I just got done with basketball. Right. I cannot okay. do it by myself. Oh, my son's staff has I'll I'll it times. Times. I just can't do it by myself. It's, it's a lot of work. At field trips, I got. Final idea. And the answer will still sell out. It'll still sell out in less than an hour. Yeah. And yeah, right. I think Donna's kidding. No, I understand if yeah. they start earlier, but I, I they all have staff. Listen, this is not this is not, not, not thing to you at all. But I'm trying to I think where Donna's going with this. And I I agree with you, is that social media has caused so much friction. Okay, but when when our commissioner sees something like that on Facebook. She's asking the right question, which I think she needs to do as part of her job, part of us commission. So she asked the question, Deb answered it. So now I think we just need to respect Deb's answer as the superintendent. But we still need to ask the question. Right. Let us ask the questions. Don't badger us to say, wait a minute, dot, 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 on notification, dot, 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 dot. No, we ask the questions, we're the commission, and that's how it works. Simple. Right, right. We, we respect everything everyone does, but we have a right to answer the question, ask the questions, especially when it, we have people come here and say, why is this and why is that? Right. Otherwise, why are we here? Right. I won't be here. We can't, if people are not going to allow us to ask the question. No. This is okay. nothing no, against I, you I or nothing no, against you. I'm defending my colleague yeah. as our commissioner. Right. 
Well, and I know it, 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 a lot of it comes from social media, which of course is frustrating because there's a lot of inaccurate information out there. Exactly. So and then we have a lot of like we deal with a at lot. the elementary school where people yeah. come that are not educated right. and sit there and give us a bad name. Right. In particular, they pointed out one of our colleagues that works on the tower, and that wasn't right either. Right. So we right. just have to stay in front of it. Yeah. Okay? Right. I, I won't say anything. All right. So, no, I, 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 I do get that. I just, I'm, I try to be consistent with how when we register for things so that because if we if I started to register early, someone said, Well, you already registered at the end of April and they miss it, then that's a whole other yeah. and that's what I ran into with basketball. Now I, I think I thought people finally got into the this is when we start so that we hit I can set everything up, but you still get people like, Well, uh, last year I registered when it's like I was a golf, so it's like a golf tournament. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's like so, a golf tournament, right? Yeah. You know, oh, why did you open it up earlier? I played for the last right. year. Now I can't play. Got knocked out. Yeah. So so that's part of it too, is I'm I'm very like I'm I'm A. I mean I I, I have everything. Yeah. I have a chart on my computer so I look what has to get done. <laughs> so I'm on it as best as I can. But I, I know that people we need someone from the AI to write the program so you don't have to worry about that. Oh my God. Anymore. Sometimes yeah. it's crazy. Even when we Is tell there people. you need from us to help, like the summer fund director? I know you post it, it's out there. Share it, you make it shareable. We, we've we've done that. it, but I, I just, again, it's, teachers do not want to work. So right. that's yeah. the hard. It's, I'm it's fortunate that I still team. have my one teacher at my other state. Yep. You know, that is willing to come back to work. And that's, if I ever lose her, I'm not sure, you know, what the next step is. And I think that's, you know, everyone kind of faces that. But um, for some reason, or in rural, and people just don't want to work. Just I don't know. It's, it's, and, and again, with, with the, the demands and everything that has to get done, you have to have people with that kind of education and background. You can't just have like in the past with college kids. They used to run a site. Okay, yeah, just go do whatever. It's it's a whole different world, and um, you know it's it really is necessary just to have everything work as smoothly as it works to be able to have people with that experience. The, the supervisor position is high school, college, high school, college. Yep, we had a lot come back, but the the people that applied the applications I looked at were all junior staff in the past, which is great. They know our program. This, the uh, my director knows them, so they they know who would be a good fit, and so that helps. It's kind of like the feeder program, yeah, which is yeah. very so so but we've been no fortunate with that. No, they're young. They are young. young. Yeah, you know you're competing against Slover right next door, and they have hundreds of counselors. Yeah, and my my daughter wants to be a counselor there, and they said, okay, there's already they're only taking thirty juniors, and they already have seventy up over seventy applicants. Yeah. Yeah. like there's. They just can't even because, because your son did the same thing, right? It's, I mean, just, he was, it's just bigger. He was your the, staff with us, and yeah, they, they have better programs. They do. I they know. have a better they, facility, and so you know, it's more fun time. I know. Like that. Yeah. So it's hard. There's yeah. Still, you might get people wanting to work there. You know, they're they're doing their interviews in April. They already have to have all their kids already signed up for camp, and yet yeah, they haven't even done their interviews for counselors yet. Yeah. You know, they just I have to tell people You know, that's an overflow. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's trying to get like this time to do, get the interviews in, and I don't have a lot, but I've had years where I've had like thirty interviews. I mean, that's that's almost three weeks to try to interview all those people. You can only interview from two forty-five on, you know. So it's it's, it's a process, yeah, because they're in, they're in school all day. So I try to do late to do work late on Thursday, be able to get more done on you know to try to get people in or who are now starting their spring sports. So that's. It's all, you know, trying to like work around everything. It's just been, it's been pretty, but it's, it's working. So, uh, okay. Fishing derbies, Easter hunt, or I've already bought all the candy. We'll start bagging it next week and hopefully weather will be, will work for us. We'll have it outside. Yeah. yeah. Is it true that all the commissions have to take money? Well, there's a just you know. I told him we got to get the letters to go. We, we took 20, but it's too many. We have to cut it, but she's willing to offer another class. So we're going to do but that was very popular. Yeah. Yeah. Two of the coaches, the, the women coaches, went to it. Yeah, they, they were not a good Yeah, she's that's good. Awesome. 
Any questions? Any other questions for Jeff? Thanks, Thanks. Steven. Oh, he came back. Oh, Steven. I've been here for the whole entire two hours and nine minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so excited about that first two hours. <laughs> All right, oh, so yeah, for nine minutes more. and 18 seconds, so I've got to beat that tonight. <laughs> Any questions on my monthly report? No. no. Beautiful. Um, All right, hold on. Oh, I got. Go ahead, then. All right, just a couple things for whomever. Uh, uh, I saw on Facebook, Little League is, and I didn't want to ask a question while I was here, but Little League needs a certified person in the concession stands. Yep, that's held to right. So is that the same as PH for the high Everything. school? Yep. All yep. of them. It was actually yep. a requirement uh, last two, two, two years ago. ago. Yeah. When Tony was still in charge of the boosters. And serve managers. Yeah, and somebody at the high school went through the training and everything. And I don't know, Little League must have fallen under the radar because they found out this year that they didn't have somebody in the health department and selling and they have to. But it was a requirement a few years ago because I dealt with somebody from Tony who went through it and it's it's extensive. I mean, I yeah. talked to Superintendent Beniniac about it um, during the season and about how how much, what was it, Carrie? Who was it? I don't remember. I don't remember who it was. We were getting away with Carrie it. Daly. It was Carrie, wasn't yeah, it? And she, she had to go to classes and go take a test. Like, yeah, it's yeah. it's extensive. I, I have a manager certification. I got it last summer. It's 40 hours of online training. Yes. Oh, yeah. Wow. And you have to wow. take a 90 question test, yeah. and it's a monitor test, so they watch you. Yes. Yeah. Make sure you're not cheating. Yeah. Or you go to somewhere in place. Like yeah. Tina's actually going Friday to retake her test because her certification is up. She doesn't have to do all the training, she's just to retake the test, but she has to have it because she has a kitchen in her facility. Um, and she has to go to a room, and the guy will be there, and she'll be here taking the test. So anyone that uses that concession stand needs yeah. that position. They always have to have someone in that position. Okay. Uh, that's are good. you asking the question? Uh, can I just add uh, that? That's what you asking. All right, and Steve and Jen, so uh, Piscataway and uh, Percival, ribbon cutting. I, I would like to have some type of ribbon cutting celebration for those two new fields. We need to get dates, publicize it, invite the mayor, you know, like we normally do, we have scissors and ribbon. Who would be the main speaker at that? Who do you well, want to get Joe there? The, the mayor was the one, the mayor did it over, well, did um, Beretta. Did he spoke? He did speak. He, he, he did. Yeah, he, he did, did speak. I yeah. spoke a couple of minutes. Yeah, a couple of seconds. I mean, but... just to thank everybody. Yeah, because like, I know Chris but... doesn't speak at the business one, so it's not staff. I know that. Right. It's what he did. Joe, Joe Ware Simowitz should be invited to the Skyway. Yeah. That's Olympics. my vote. <laughs> what? You want to do it? Absolutely not. I'm busy that day, but Joe Simmons for Buscaglio. We'll, sure, we'll make sure the litter's all picked up. Yeah, oh, that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what we want. We'll work on dates in April. It'll be, I mean, the field's already being used. Percival probably won't be open until May 1st. Um, so that we have some time with. It's really, I, like I, that, I um, just want to make like sure it's done. Yeah. 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 You know, personally, get soccer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so they, when they first put the rocks in there, they were ADA accessible. We did a river coming. Yeah. Cut it too. And then uh, both those guys got uh, Steve in front of I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. All right. Steve. Yeah. Steve, how's the, uh, have you seen any of the garbage? Remember, I reported that uh, yeah. last month about the garbage over. So the we field. had a wonderful meeting with the Berlin High School security, the police department. And since that meeting, we have not been back to the high school yet to pick up trash in over six weeks. The point has been delivered. The students are listening. They are cleaning up after themselves. And the garbage has come to an end at Berlin High School. Great. Right. You can thank next. Dave Franco, John Schmoltz, the Berlin Police Department, uh, Katie Amenta, and the whole entire school system for the support to put an end to it. Great. Can you can you thank them for us as well? I or absolutely you, will. Thank you. And then one last thing, Stephen. I know it's not your issue, but if you could just relay the message over to the school as well, 
Um, last week, when I, or the week before, when I went for a walk around the, um, uh, the the track again, everybody's parking way down the other end in front of every everything. There's like every emergency exit mm -hmm. is basically um, blocked. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So yep. it, I know that I know that that's been a problem for the coaches um, in the past, and I know these are not coaches. But I think we maybe need to get the police to just patrol that area maybe on a Sunday because they do a lot of people go out and play flag football there and, and alike. So just yep. maybe mention that. No problem. So that actually does fall under me. And we the signs were delivered last week. The all the no parking fire lanes will be stenciled and painted during April vacation. The signs will be installed and the police will start handing tickets out some around April 7th. Because God forbid there was a fire that yeah, day, yeah. They were, there was no way anybody was getting to me. Yep. Okay. Thank you. No problem, Tony. Um. So let me let me just get this right. So the garbage problem ended. Yep. And it was based due to Berlin High School students. Correct. Not not visitors like we've been thinking, or out of town people playing. Or you know whatever people it was Berlin High students throwing all the garbage out. Eighty twenty rule. Yeah. Eighty twenty. Eighty twenty. Eighty Berlin. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what is that now? What is that meeting to solve the whole problem? Okay. Right. So the the, the meeting the security upgrades the new cameras that were installed. The uh, Dave Franco, what he implemented inside of the captains and inside the school system, Katie Amenta doing a public service announcement to all the students. It was a group effort and it has been successful as of yet. That's amazing. That's really amazing. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. What about my birdhouse? <laughs> your, your birdhouse has kind of fallen with a couple of trees that have fallen in the open space. That with any luck, after we get all the athletic fields opened, we'll take on our second job of being trail uh -huh. administrators. <laughs> <laughs> that might be after cemeteries. I don't know where that falls, in, <laughs> but your birdhouse is on the list. Greg Starr took a lot of my time this week. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, speaking of fields, what's the ETA for opening? Uh, the high school and everybody could have opened this weekend. Berlin, Berlin softball has decided to postpone their opening till Monday. Uh, Leo has decided to utilize Biscaglio or Berlin High, uh, Biscaglio or Scalise to get through the weekend instead of going out and doing any potential damage on the field. So I would imagine high school sports will earmark the start outside this coming Monday, and McGee Sports is scheduled to start outside the 25th. Thank you. And no cleats on the field, right? So we tell people. I think it's just no metal cleats, plastic cleats, the same they use for football and everything should be fine. Sure, sure. Okay. Thank you. All right, you want to go through your playground thing real quick? Absolutely. You guys all have a, have a playground um, handout about the playground that yeah. was created by Creative Recreation, um, which is considered miracle equipment. We've reached out to a couple of other companies. We have not kind of heard back from them. We're still waiting for one preliminary design, but we kind of think working with Karen, who unfortunately was on for the first hour and 45 minutes tonight, but seems yeah. to have hopped off. She's been bouncing it off the moms group and she's had a couple of great suggestions. Um, one of the latest additions was the roller slide, which seems to be pretty big. Um, I'm going to try to go to my screen. So if you guys have any questions, I'm not, not looking at you, but I'm trying to follow this. Um, so page one, it's kind of pretty interactive um, where you see where the black entrance is coming in. We're going to move that probably 25, 30 feet down and more make like a more of an ADA ramp coming in. And our game plan with that is I'm going to try to go back to my zoom. My game plan with that is what we're going to do is we're going to come down about 19 feet. We're going to put a 60 inch circle. We're going to go lateral, probably another eight or nine feet, do another 60 foot circle, come down and have, be able to have access to a little bit of handicap parking spot and at the same time an a uh, handicap porta potty because the building that currently there is not ADA compliant. So we think this will address all of the needs. Um, our question has been for the latter part of the last month of exactly how we can get the transition from the top of the playground to the bottom of the playground to meet pretty much a two to one slope. Um, that was a little 
back and forth, but we think we figured that out. Met with New Britain Fence today to work up a price on getting a gate and a fence to go across the front of that, more decorative, which is kind of mirror what community playground is, which I think is right around 240 feet. So our earmark is somewhere between 185 to $200,000 worth of playground equipment and installed with somewhere around maybe five or six, seven percent contingency to put us right around 215,000. Uh, we have $200,000 in capital, and I have $15,000 in my operational that we'd like to put towards it. So with a completion, maybe somewhere around November 1st, uh, start construction just after Labor Day, once all the kids go back to school, so we're not missing convenience to everybody for the summer with moms, dads, and everybody trying to take their kids to the park. Awesome. That's great. Yeah. Progress, progress, yeah. progress. Yeah. Great working with uh, the moms group and Karen. This, and this plan that. is, uh, I know. and they're very happy with this. You know, Karen has Karen has been my go-to person. She's passed a lot of information back and forth. Um, we've had some other ideas that just kind of didn't fit what we were looking for. Um, one being the pollinator garden, a couple other allergy restrictions that just don't really follow what other communities do. And we didn't think that was the proper thing to implement to our playgrounds as well. Um, we are not wasting or spending a lot of money frivolously on five or $6,000 worth of tables, five or $6,000 worth of benches. We're going to go with tables that were constructed inside of our department. Same with benches that were constructed inside of our department. We can make a bench for about $80, $90 compared to $1,200, which you purchase one online. So this is the first playground in 27 years, right? No, that's incorrect. The well, that Hubbard Playground was redone um, probably 10 years ago. Right. Griswold Front Playground and Back Playground were re redone when Jen started, which I believe seven years ago. So we've had a lot of playgrounds done over the time, but this is the first playground that will be able to utilize by the community during sunup to sundown. Is this like the size of the um, uh, playground next to Willard? Like, Because uh, you can't tell on them. Like, like Friendship like, Place? Yeah, Friendship Place. Is that like the same like kind of size? Kind of deal? Friendship Place is quite large. This one is more, if this one's more spread out and it's such a huge area that no, it's going to be a little bit smaller and a little dialed down. And what we're having, hoping to do is maybe possibly somebody might raise some money through a fundraiser or possibly we might have some money during our operational budget during the year to add different type of elements to actually fill in the place. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have the money to fill the playground starting in 2024, but over the next couple of years, we'll start to implement little things here and there. I have a question, I'm not sure it goes to uh, Jen or to you, Steve, that has nothing to do with the playground. Uh, how did the nutmeg group take our... They were fine. Um, he said it's, it's a shame that they won't consider um, waiving the entire fee, but we understand and we'd still like to use the fields. By the way, I'm leaving and here's my new contact taking over the game. Oh, well, he's already leaving? He's yeah, well, he's already leaving. So, hey, he's coming back there. Um, Council was very happy we were only doing that. Just a thought on Little People's Playground. This services ages from 2 to 12? 2 to 12. So I hear people talking, you know, some of these moms, like little people, you know, you think it was originally designed to be the toddler place for a playground. Maybe we should change the name at some point. Just think of nothing for now. I'm just saying, come up with another name. I could be completely- right, It doesn't matter. Right? I mean, I see where you're pointing, but- Go ahead, Steve. But, uh, I could be completely incorrect with my statement that's gonna come out of my mouth. I do not believe any of our playgrounds are really named after anybody. I believe they oh, are no, kind of I, yeah, standard no, names that if they've been given. Yeah, I'm, I'm not saying after a person or anything. I'm just saying little people's, the way it was Even before with people. the toddlers, that's all. Like, it doesn't matter, it's just something to think about themselves. Would, Great. Would this be the this right time to meeting. bring up the disc golf? No, we're gonna talk about that next meeting. I decided to table that till next meeting because I thought we would be here quite a long time tonight. Okay. If you would like to discuss it, I am more than prepared to discuss this tonight. And I am too. <laughs> if you would like to add it to the agenda right now, we can do that. We will bring it April. April 11th. April 11th, yeah. 
Okay. Great. All set. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. Can I have a motion? I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Joe. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Have a happy Thank Easter, you. everybody. Thank you, Tiffany. Aye. Aye. Aye.